boy Tiber here in reaction. So I guess I'm going to kind of do a full news Monday and I got roll on my phone. But either way, about to get to some, get at least a little out the way for sure though, in case I get too into Raw and that's the latest, not the latest, well, another diary production with what had happened was, as you know, I'm doing um this one, I'm doing Daw, so I thought this was going to be the last one, but I'm going to do one more because I think it's a Daw, but anyway, it's close to the Daw, I'm going to do it anyway afterwards. Yeah, possibly today or tomorrow. Not tomorrow, today or next week. But anyway, but we're, we're right now we're gonna focus on another well dawn that's kinda well known as well too, and that is Acid Pro. I kinda heard about this a little bit as well too. It's definitely one of the high end as someone of a high end one. I could be wrong as well too, but I definitely heard about Acid Pro along Pro along the lines of that and logic and there's another one I I'm trying to remember that's like a big time as well too. But anyway, as the pros I heard heard about as far as like dolls and stuff like that. So we're gonna take a look into this to get in more detail for in case there is a uh there is a, as I say that is either high end or could be wrong. So I thought do let's check it out. How does acid work? We auto detect transients using an FFT algorithm and then cut the beat up based upon the transients and do a crossfades between the pieces. But how does acid work? It's magic. What's up? You got your boy Direct, aka Native Shades, reminding you to like and subscribe because today we're going to be talking about Acid Pro. What had happened was <laughs> Acid Pro. What if I was to tell you that none other than Hove himself, Jigga Man, Jay Z, is partially responsible for acid pro success that's probably why i heard it from jay-z i know all like i heard it from somebody or somewhere i definitely know here been here about it for a minute but yeah that's probably why i first heard about it yes <laughs> well check this out acid pro came out around 1998 acid pro comes out yeah, as a door like and it's not days. a bad door it's a good door at the time people were still dealing with hardware a lot so people didn't really jump shift to software so much but it was it was cool you know what i'm saying it was a cool door well give it some times a couple years pass by and in 2003 jay-z decides to drop the black album mm -hmm. you know the album where he fades to black yeah he decides to drop that joint <laughs> and in dropping the black album he delivers his vocals um for mix-ups and mashes he says hey man here's my acapellas oh, and you can use my oh yeah you know his that album got a lot of uh got um mashed up a lot of times though as well too so yeah like the gray album with the, with him his song being messed mashed up with the beatles and stuff like that so yeah oh okay that explains a lot right there that's probably that's the other reason i probably heard about as pro because i was like listen a lot of mash i was like at one point i was like fan of listening to mashup songs as well too he i'm right like jason one remember, who had some mashups up with the, before he made the ultimate matchup with his uh, collaboration with Lincoln Park as well too. So yeah, this is going to be interesting to check out. Acapellas and mash them up with any beat that you want and have fun with it. Cool. Well, one producer Deja Mouse. decides to make a mashup, a mix of Jay-Z's Black Album vocals with, with the, the white, Beatles. The Beatles white album. You know, the number one rock group in a history? Yep. The White Album. Yeah, the he decides album. to make a mashup with Jay Z's Black Album vocals with the Beatles' White Album uh, tracks. And he calls it The Gray album. album. Yep. This guy is none other than the producer Danger Mouse. And man, this thing caused me. an hysteria when, when he decided to drop this album. He said that he originally did it just for his friends and buddies. He didn't mean it to go global, right. but wow. everybody was downloading this album, man. They were mm -hmm. sites selling the album. They yep. were selling it for, for you know, record selling prices that you would buy CDs at the time for, yeah, like $14.99, for $19.99. And let me tell you something. It was an awesome mashup. They had, uh, I remember their Dirt Off the Shoulder, their version of it with the Beatles. It was incredible. You know what I'm saying? Um, their public service announcement almost beat the original. <laughs> it was a dope mashup album. 
everybody was downloading it everybody was hacking and, and at that time hackers were in full effect yeah a bear <laughs> <All share. day. laughs> i remember bear share yup bear share larwire uh, uh, free download music software yep. apps were out and people were downloading the album left and right yup emi you know the basically the copyright holders to the beatles music said nah we gotta put a stop to this <laughs> they gave danger mouse a cease and desist Ooh. they said listen you gotta take your stuff off the internet bro you gotta stop uh uh offering this thing for download mm. he's like this is kind of like out of my control or something <laughs> i didn't really mean it to go this far right but they was like you got a cease and desist so they they put a cease and desist to stop all stores and all mm. um online stores and everything like that from downloading the gray wow. album there was a, a a group called uh I, I forgot i think downhill something a nah, group that battle. you know they were object they objected to it and they decided to for a, a one last f you a one last f you to emi <laughs> they decided to put the album up as a protest on a Tuesday and they called it Great Tuesday and they put the album up one last time for free download <laughs> and I think they said over a million people downloaded that album Damn, <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> Danger Mouse actually went platinum probably double platinum that time with the Grey album wow. you know believe it or not well you know back then you do something historic like that first of all if you're a producer that's popping back then the first question people want to know is what gear is he using? When DJ True. Premier makes a hit and so people are like, well, what gear does he use? Oh, he uses the MPC-62? Right. Oh, wow. You know, when Pete Rock makes a hit, whoa, what's he using? Oh, SB. he's using the SB-1200? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, with Danger Mouse, they wanted to know, oh, okay, what gear is this guy using? There we go. And Danger Mouse says, oh, um, I use a software called Acid Pro. Oh, my gosh. He says that Acid Pro sales go yep. through the roof. <laughs> People start downloading Acid Pro left and right. Mm -hmm. They download the crack version. They get same way, same way they uh, same way what happened with uh, Fruity Loops. Night Wonder missing it. They did do some. I think they did something with Jay Z and something like that. Next thing you know, something like hotcakes. They buy the version of Acid Pro. And Acid Pro, you know, it starts picking up. I mean, Pro mm -hmm. Tools still held it down as the number Pro one DAW. But Acid Pro was like right there, man. You know what I'm saying? So people started getting Acid Pro, man. And um, it was a cheaper alternative to Pro Tools. Because at the okay, time, for, for like Pro said, Tools to run flawlessly on your computer, you needed about a gig or two. You know what I'm saying? Um, and Pro Tools was expensive. It was like over $1,000. And even the stripped down version was a little over $500. Acid Pro, I think, was $179. And I think they had a version for $99. You know what I'm saying? So it just made sense that if you wanted to get kind of into the music making space, you know, you, you might want to consider this door Acid Pro. And it was very intuitive. It's a very intuitive door. It's basically like your Windows XP program. Yep. When you look at it, you're like, oh, okay, this is a Windows XP program. You can basically navigate on it real quickly. I had friends that came over. They saw that door, never used it before, and they was already making music wow. on Acid Pro. They already knew their way around it, pretty much. 50%, they knew their way around it. Acid Pro, th this was my door. I, I gotta say, this was my door. This okay. is still my door. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But they had some pretty interesting aspects of it. Acid Pro are, is the first to come out with Acid Eye Loops. That's basically when you have a WAV file and it syncs to any tempo in your project. Ooh, that that technology is patented that's awesome. by Acid Pro. Acid Pro also it's has a like patent of. Um, you know, with the mouse, when you just swipe across the screen and, and it just lays out all your hi-hats for you, okay. like in one swipe. You know, like in Tinder, when you swipe left when you don't like her. <laughs> it's the same thing with swiping with Acid Pro. They patented that technology. And they also patented the technology of pitching your, your sound up or down using the plus and minus keys on the computer. You know what I'm saying? You, you'll be surprised. Something as little as that.
makes you create music completely different. It makes you create music totally different. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you remember, but back in the days, if you listen to people's music, people's music that that used Acid Pro as a door, you got all kind of pitching, all kind Mm -hmm. of sound pitching up here, high pitching down here, low. And it's because they made it so easy. Well, Acid Pro was, it was pretty kicking. It was doing its thing. You know, uh, Sony picked it up. They picked up Acid Pro and they, they was going strong with it for a little bit. But something happened. Oh, here we go. Around 2011 and 2012, other companies started to pick their game up. Ooh. Companies like Machine Uh-oh. started to come out and they started changing the game. Yep. You know, you had companies like Ableton Live. Yep. Ableton Live came in with such yeah. a force. And we did, re- I did react to both that and the machine video. Machine, machine aka the NBC killer. And, and this one as well too. It, it, Ableton Live came in hitting harder than Mike Tyson in the 80s. Ableton Live came in Mike Tyson hard. Mike Tyson dude in the 80s. So a lot of other doors started coming out and they started bringing the ruckus basically. And Acid Pro's features started to get a little bit outdated. And then Sony dropped Acid Pro. Instead of updating things, Sony was like, listen, we got too much on our hands, man. We got speakers <laughs> here. We we got, uh, you know, headphones here. We got a wow. record label over here. We got so many products, man. We don't we don't have time to think about uh, any uh, DAW software. You know, we'll keep Sony Vegas. We'll keep that since there's not that much competition. Probably only Final Cut. But Acid Pro, yeah, we're going to drop that to the side. And also SoundForge. We'll get rid of that, too. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So for, like, almost a decade, Acid Pro stayed in purgatory. They stayed in limbo, and they could not move. And the Acid Pro users, myself included, was suffering. You know, because Acid Pro was a 32-bit application. And, you know, everything started advancing. VST started advancing. Yeah. So all doors moved to 64-bit. Uh-huh. So Acid Pro was still stuck on 32-bit, man. So it was like every time you was trying to use that door, it was just crashing. Mm-hmm. It just crashed left and right. If you use MIDI, you was crashing. Yeah. You, you had to do so many paranoid saves. It was, <laughs> it, it, it was bananas. <laughs> every single second, you're like, save, oh, save, 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 save. <laughs> You know, because you didn't know when was the next time it was going to crash. <laughs> and oh boy, it was going to oh crash. Boy. It was definitely going to crash. Acid Pro could not drive the car. It was crashing nope. left and right. You put up one MIDI file and Acid Pro is freezing on you. Mm. Acid Pro is frozen. Shook. <laughs> so for like almost a decade, Acid Pro stayed in limbo. And us Acid Pro users, we was like, we was just going through it. But we still love the door because it's such, uh, as far as dealing with audio, in my opinion, this has to be one of the best doors when it comes to dealing with audio. You're just able to manipulate audio so easily. You're able to chop it so easily, uh, you know, fade it now so easy, flip it, bounce it. You can do whatever you want to do with audio on Acid Pro so easily, seamlessly. When it comes to MIDI, it's another story. So Acid Pro was on Limbo for years. And then a company called Magix. Okay. You know, they had their door called Samplitude. Um, They decided to pick up Acid Pro. They said, you know what, we're going to pick up this door. And let me tell you something, the Acid Pro community, we were happy. It was like our savior. And you know, Magix, they they kinda they kinda started doing some things. They 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 brought it to 64-bit, which was great. You know, that was greatly appreciated. They gave it some new features, you know, they kind of updated it. They updated the whole GUI and everything like that. And yeah, they started, they, they, they were listening to the community and they were trying to give it all the kind of features and updates that they can. Mm-hmm. And you know, they, they're doing pretty good. You know what I'm saying? What I like about them is that they're listening to the community and they're trying. So I could definitely give them, you know, respect for that. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's acid pro <laughs> what had happened was so this is your boy direct right. aka native shades reminding you definitely a good insight on um, the acid pro most definitely that was definitely a good insight on it for real though um 
Hair Ball and how it was used for the Grey album, well known Grey album, how by Deja Miles, how it, it dealt with uh, the country of the Grey album, then dealing with the sales until, you know, the other ones, the alternatives start coming up, and then the uh, the uh, the competition started rising with Machine, Ableton, the NBC was getting some dolls wall too, so it was definitely, was a, and then again, instead of being upgraded, it got dropped, but it got picked back up by another company. So that's pretty cool. So other than that, uh, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T-Bear signing off. One love.